Thanks, for given this opportunity for me. My name is Sundarajan, basically from a Hindu religion. But I'm not differentiating Muslims and uh, Hindu or any other Christian, but uh, one small doubt. God doesn't have shape. But even if we are going temple in Hindu, we are, you know very well, there are different names of gods and uh, different pictures and uh, statues, you know very well. My question is, if I am going temple, if for example, if I am suffering something, problem, if I am going temple, if I pray for me, God will accept or not? This is my question. The brother has the question that God does not have shape, but if I go to a temple and if I worship idols, does God listen to me? Does God answer my prayer or not? Whether if you read Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita is the most widely read book amongst all the scriptures of Hinduism. Brother, have you heard of Bhagavad Gita? I know some of things, but yes. I am not all. If you read Bhagavad Gita chapter number 7, verse number 20 says, All those whose intelligence has been stolen by material desires, they worship demigods, they worship false god. That means, if you are a materialistic person, you worship false god, you worship demigod. And further it says that those who worship false god, almighty god, true god, yet answers your prayer, but you go to the kingdom of false god. That means even if you worship false god, God many a time answers your prayer so that you go to the kingdom of false god. Same thing is mentioned in the Quran in Surah Baqarah chapter number 2, verse number 15, that Allah gives them rope so that they may go to and fro. Allah says in Surah Baqarah to the hypocrites, to the munafiks, to the kafir that Allah gives them rope to go to and fro so that they will understand. So many a time, many a time, even if you worship the false god, your prayers are answered. That does not mean that you are worshipping the correct god. Because many people think, for example, many of the people who are non-Muslims, they are wealthy. They are leading a luxurious life. Now, wealth is not the criteria for you to go to Jannah. It's not the criteria for you to go to paradise. The Quran says wealth is a test. Anything which good befalls you, it can be two things. It can either be a reward from God or it can be a test from God. Any calamity that befalls you, it can either be a punishment or it can be a test. So suppose you worship a false god. You go to a temple and you worship the idol. Just because your prayer is answered, that does not mean you're worshiping the true god. God is testing you. You ask for wealth, God gives you wealth. God is testing you that do you follow the true path or not. Because if you read the Hindu scriptures, Bhagavad Gita is called as the nectar of the Vedas the most superior scripture amongst all the Hindu scriptures are the Vedas. There are two types of scriptures. One is Shruti, the other is Smriti. Shruti is the word of God and Smriti is the word of human beings. So among the Shruti, you have the Vedas and the Upanishads. These are the highest. When you read the Chandogya Upanishad, chapter number 6, section number 2, verse number 1, it says, Ekkam Evidityam. It's a Sanskrit quotation which means God is one without a second. If you read the Sveta Setara Upanishad, chapter number 6, verse number 9, Nakasya Kasij, Janita Chadipa, of that God, there are no lords. He has got no parents. Almighty God has got no superior. He has got no mother. He has got no father. It's mentioned in Sveta Setara Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 19, Na Pratima Asti, of that God, there is no Pratima. Pratima is a Sanskrit word which means an image, a photograph, a painting, a picture, an idol. It means a portrait. It means a statue. So Sveta Setar Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 19 says, Na Tasya Pratima Asti, of that God, there is no image, there is no photograph, there is no painting, there is no portrait, there is no idol, there is no statue, there is no sculpture. The same message repeated even in Yajur Ved. Chapter number 32, verse number 3. Na tasya patima asti. Of that God, there is no image, there is no picture, there is no painting, there is no portrait, there is no idol, there is no sculpture, there is no statue. 
So if you go back to the scriptures, you realize that according to the Hindu scripture, Almighty God has got no image, he has got no statue. So if you worship an image, you're going against the Vedas, you're going against Upanishads. So just because you are going and praying, sometimes, as the Bhagavad Gita says, God may answer your prayer to test you. That do you follow his commandment or not? That does not mean that who you are worshipping is correct. So that's the reason you should follow your scripture and your Hindu scripture says that Almighty God has got no idol, has got no image, has got no photograph, has got no sculpture. So making an idol of God, an image of God, a photograph of God, a statue of God is prohibited in Hinduism. Does that answer your question, brother? Okay, thank you. So do you believe that God has got an idol? Yes. Do you believe God has got an idol? You mean water, clearly? Do you believe in idol worship? Yes. So aren't you going against the scripture? Aren't you going against the Vedas? My point of view, faith only. So brother, you said that you are a Hindu, correct? Yes. So do you believe in the Vedas or not? Yes. So I quoted references from a Hindu scripture that your Hindu scripture, Yajur Ved, chapter 32, verse number 3, says that God has got no image, has got no portrait, has got no idol. So isn't idol worship wrong? No, I don't have much communication skill, so that's why I could not express more. You don't have to have communication skills, you have to read. You have to read your scripture. I'm quoting. I'm giving references from your scripture. You don't have to hunt. You have to go back home, or we have a library in Bombay, Islamic Research Foundation Library, which we have translations of all the major scriptures in the world. Or you go on the internet and type. Go Yajurved, chapter 32, verse number 3, and read the translation. It says, Almighty God has got no image, has got no photograph, has got no painting. So do you believe in the Vedas or not? Yes, I am believing. So if your Veda says God has got no idol, will you yet go to a temple? But from my childhood onwards, I am going there. Suppose your father believes from childhood, 2 plus 2 is equal to 5. So would you believe today? If they teach it from the first standard onwards, then I would also do the same thing. So if someone teaches in the village 2 plus 2 is equal to 5 from first standard and he comes to you, so will you say 2 plus 2 is equal to 5? That is the first case of my knowledge, then that is the way I will accept it. So suppose your son goes to a school and they teach 2 plus 2 is equal to 5, so will you say, son, no problem, continue? Will you say that? No, 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 no. No, no, I, no, I, no, 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 no. See, see, see. What do you will tell your son? My son, that teacher taught you wrong. See, already I studied 2 plus 2 is 4, so I cannot uh, put my son... Oh. 2 plus 3, 2 is 5. No, but if he goes to a school before admission, do you interview the maths teacher? No. No. So suppose the maths teacher teaches him wrong. So won't you correct your son? Yeah, I will correct it. Correct. So that's the reason I'm correcting you. <laughs> I love you, brother. Thanks. Because I love you, I want to correct you that what you're saying is against your scripture. Forget what the Quran says, forget what the Bible says. If you read your Hindu scriptures, your Hindu scripture says that God has got no image, has got no picture, has got no painting, has got no idol. So if you're doing idol worship, you're going against your scripture. So what I request you, brother, today when you go back home, go on the internet, type Yajurved chapter 30, verse number 3, Sveta Svetara Upanishad chapter 4, verse number 19, and try and read the translation, and tomorrow, Inshallah, come again, we're having a question and session. Tomorrow at 9 o'clock. Same time. And Inshallah, we'll give you the first opportunity. Okay, thanks. First one, what is the stance of Islam on evolution and two what is the stance of islam on apostates